Hello everyone, welcome back to Native Engineering. Today we are doing nozzles, power machines and six. So nozzles. A nozzle is a device by which a substance is accelerated to a high velocity by means of a drop in pressure of a substance. So by this statement we can tell that basically in simple words, a nozzle it's a device which we use to convert from pressure energy into kinetic energy because we know uh, energy is conserved. So in this case, a nozzle, it's a, a device that we're using to convert from pressure energy to uh, high velocity or to kinetic energy. So we have two types of nozzles. We have a convergent nozzle and a convergent divergent um, nozzles those are our two types of nozzles that we will be dealing with so let's start with the covergent this is a basic structure of a covergent convergent uh, nozzle we are having this part having our large diameter with our large diameter this is the inlet and then the one with the smaller diameter this is the outlet the fluid or that substance that we want to increase its velocity from pressure it's entering in this direction and leaving in uh, this part of the nozzle so at this point we are still having high pressure low velocity and we know that pressure it's um directly proportional to the temperature increase when we are increasing the pressure of a substance the temperature will also increase meaning at this part the enthalpy will be higher than the enthalpy of this of the fluid or that substance when it is now leaving the nozzle because we know that a nozzle it's a device that we are using to convert from what from pressure energy to what to velocity velocity here it's uh, represented by c so in this case in, in this part which is part number one let's say this is part number two we are going to have a high pressure by the time it gets to this point we will have low pressure which will now have been converted towards to kinetic energy which will be high velocity so pressure is converted towards to velocity meaning the as pressure is in is decreasing the temperature will also decrease which will also cause a decrease in what in enthalpy because we know these two are directly proportional. So this is the basic structure of a convergent nozzle. We're having pressure number one, uh, volume number one, temperature number one. This is a velocity number one, enthalpy, entropy, and area number one. The same thing, it's P, P2, V2, T2, C2 c it's the velocity h2 s2 and area number two so let's look at the convergent divergent nozzle so this is the structure of a convergent divergent divergent nozzle so here we are having three sections we're having the inlet and then we're having the outlet here This is number one, sorry, number one. This is a number two. Say number uh, And then this will be our center. Or it will be our truth. That's uh, the name that this part we call. It's a truth. So what will happen is we are having two nozzles combined together. We're having as you can tell that this part is what the, co the convergent and then the other part it's a divergent so what will happen is the still same uh, thing it's happening a nozzle it's a device we're using to what to convert from pressure energy into kinetic energy so the pressure here it's greater than the pressure here the pressure here it's also greater than the pressure here as we have seen in the co convergent example so we're going to have high pressure and the pressure is now decreased from here to here it will also decrease again from here 
to here. We are going to have a higher velocity here than we are having a higher velocity here since the pressure is decreasing as we go to, the, to that direction, meaning the velocity is increasing as we go to that uh, direction. So these are the formulas that we use in this section. We're having this formula which we already know by now. T1 divided by T2 and they are in kelvins, remember. It's equals to V1 divided by V2 all to the uh, to the power. This is gamma. We will be using gamma most of the time, so let's just put it as gamma. Gamma minus 1, it's equals to P2 minus P1. This is P1. Sorry about that. Uh, raised to N minus 1 divided by N. And then... We have another formula to calculate for the pressure at the trough. It is given by the pressure by pressure number one, and then in times in bracket, two divided by gamma plus one, all raised to um, divided by gamma minus one. We have the, the formula to calculate for the temperature at the trough is Tc. It's equals to T1 times two divided by gamma plus one. MRT PV, we know this. If we're using 1 here, we'll have to use 1, 1. If we're using C, we'll have to use C, C. Then we have the formula to calculate for um, the velocity of that substance or that fluid that we're dealing with at the growth. Really, it will, it's given by the square root of 2 times uh, specific capacity at constant pressure times 10 to the power 3 because we want this to be in joules in uh, in joules per kg kelvin most of the time it is given in kilojoules that's why we have to times by 10 to the power 3 and then in bracket t1 minus tc we have another uh, this is the formula to calculate for the velocity of the substance at the outlet it's given by the square root of 2 times specific capacity at constant pressure times 10 to the power 3 in bracket t1 minus t2 and then that's another formula to calculate for the velocity velocity at the center it's given by 2 times 10 to the power 3 in bracket h1 minus h2 we know that temperature times specific capacity it's equals to enthalpy so this is what uh, happened here same thing did calculate the formula to calculate for area area 2 is given by m but if we have already used the m in this case to calculate for the v there's no need for you to include this m right here but if we are going to use for this to calculate for the specific pre the specific volume in this formula that is where you have to include this m it's given by volume divided by the velocity if you want area number one, area number two, we're going to use velocity number two and uh, and we are going to use volume number two and velocity number two. Same applies to this one. If you want the area of the drop, you have to use the volume of the drop and the velocity of the drop. And then you have adiabatic efficiency. Adiabatic efficiency is given by T1 minus T2 divided by T1 minus T2 prime. And then we also have another formula that is given by H1 minus H2, H1 minus H2 prime. So the values on top, T1 minus T2, this is the actual temperature drop. So this is the temperature drop taking into consideration the efficiency of the system. And then this one, it's like the theoretical temperature drop. It's the iso isoentropic temperature drop we are not taking into consideration this time the the efficiency of the system so this um the actual temperature drop minus the iso isoentropic temperature drop will give us what we call the adiabatic efficiency and then we also have another formula to calculate for the adiabatic efficiency in this case we will be using the heat energy the values of the heat energy it will be h1 minus h2 h1 minus h2 prime same actual enthalpy drop isoentropic enthalpy drop 
this one taking into consider taking into consideration what the efficiency of the system and then the isotropic not taking into consideration the efficiency of the device that we are working with so yeah this is everything that you need to start answering questions on nozzles i will see you on the next one